Hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to another shorty. So, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2 wasn't as good as its predecessor. It seemed to lack the sparkle, and the villainous Chester V really didn't hit the spot for me. And it's easy to blame it being a sequel, but I think what it really needed was the deft and masterful touch of writer-directors Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Over the past few years, this pairing of writer-directors has been slowly accumulating a reputation for taking the sow's ear of questionable source material and making silk purse after bankable silk purse. But where did it all begin for these guys? Well, let's dive in and take a look. Born in 1975, three months apart, and on the opposite sides of the USA, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller first met in their first year of further education. They discovered that they had a shared affinity for comedy and a passion for animation. Of course, that would be that, but for the hand of fate, and the attentions of the then head of Disney, Michael Eisner. Of course, going to meet the head of Disney is a nerve-wracking experience for the best of us, and so Miller, for it was he that received the invite, brought along moral support in the form of Lord. Thus the partnership was born. In 1999, Lord and Miller were hired as writers for the teen sitcom Zoe, Duncan, Jack and Jane, which gave the world its first taste of actress Selma Blair. Sadly, the characters of Duncan, Jack and Jane lost their spot in the title as of the second and last season, as the show was retooled and ultimately cancelled. The next year, Lord and Miller produced a pilot, Clone High School USA, which eventually became Clone High, an animated sitcom about historical figures reincarnated as teenagers in the modern day. Sadly, this lasted only one season, as protests in India made the depiction of Gandhi's reincarnation somewhat inappropriate. It would seem, then, that fate giveth, and fate taketh away. After a few more non-starters, the pair finally hit their groove when they were hired to write for How I Met Your Mother, a surprisingly long-winded story of how a man met his wife, and the trials and tribulations that led up to that moment. But seeing as they didn't create the show itself, we'll move on. In 2006, Lord and Miller were first hired to write Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, based on the beloved children's book. After much development, their firing and subsequent rehiring, and taking over as directors, the movie finally got its release in 2009, to widespread acclaim. It was in the wake of this that the pair decided to take a different route, taking interest in Jonah Hill's 21 Jump Street project, which became a fully blown adaptation of the mid-90s TV show in 2012. But the story doesn't end there. 21 Jump Street performed well enough to warrant a sequel, which is currently in theatres as of June 2014. And of course, Lord and Miller returned to their first love animation in February 2014 with the Lego Movie. And I may yet just get to that. And in light of the Lego Movie, it's all the more baffling they decided not to be involved with Cloudy 2 when Cloudy 1 was so successful. And actually, there's still a few points I'd like to raise. Looking back at Cloudy One, you see the moments of humour and emotion gel together, as this goofy concept that a wild-haired twenty-something could invent a machine that can radiate dihydrogen monoxide into a non-toxic state and even into food becomes believable through a young man's relationship with his widowed father and the surrogate father figure that is the Mayor of Swallow Falls. Cloudy Two seeks to replicate this relationship, between Flint and the Mayor that is, without understanding what was behind it. The crowbarring in of Chester V and his supposed importance does a great disservice to Flint's character, as in Cloudy One, he was inspired by the classical scientists, rather than a charlatan who only cares about the bottom line. Also, I have to take issue with the re of Sam Sparks, who took such an active role in the first movie, and ends up doing so much less in the second. Once they get to the island, the dreams of Sparks would all but evaporate, mostly because, once again, Chester V looms large over this film. This then is the main problem with Cloudy 2 as I see it. 
This new villain that seems so charismatic essentially takes over the movie, and the focus shifts from the revelation of foodimals to the machinations of an image-obsessed CEO. I could probably restate this a thousand ways, but it just seems to me that Chester V is the problem with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. And I know it seems like I've been harping on about it, but I had such high hopes for Cloudy 2, and it really disappointed me. Anyways, I'll spare you all the rant. Let's bring this to a close. I've been Funky Monkey, and you've been watching another whole shorty. So long!